My name is Jeff, aka Yellow Chops. I got a lot of positive feedback from my previous Sound Slate video. Had a lot of people hitting me up saying, hey, I got an iPad or I got a Sound Slate um, after I watched your video and they had some questions regarding connectivity and that kind of thing. Well, I went ahead and made some upgrades to my Sound Slate rig and uh, hopefully you can benefit by seeing any of the changes that I made and you can get some new ideas for your setup. So let's get started. All right guys, so here's my upgraded Sound Slate rig. I have my Monster Power Conditioner, my Sound Slate. I have uh, just a rack mount mixer, a real basic rack mount mixer, a headphone amp, and then tucked underneath I have an Airport Express. So let's get everything cabled up. So we have the, we have the rack turned around so you can see that we have the cables already connected up to the back of the mixer for the inputs and outputs that we commonly use. Um, the point of the mixer is when I go to a church, the sound guy's not gonna throw another line for me most of the time. So I'll just use exi their existing line and I'll just submix it with my rack mount mixer. So I take the back of their key, what's connected to the back of the keyboard, I plug it into the main outs, and then I connect in the keyboard that I just disconnected to channel three. It doesn't have to be channel three, it's in channel one. And then I have another one dedicated for um, anything that requires an eighth inch line in. Um, so like iPhone, iPods, iPads, laptops, that kind of thing. So I already have a, ch a channel dedicated for that. Plug that in. And then lastly, it's just MIDI. There you go. You see how easy that was? And I actually have another um, spare line just in case I need to plug in another keyboard or another input in. I have one ready to go. I don't have to go hunting in the back. So now we're looking at the front of the rack. Let's go ahead and power everything on. While it's coming up, um, I'll explain why I have the headphone amp. Basically, this mixer has an auxiliary out. Uh, what that allows me to do is that allows me to listen to my uh, keyboard or sound slate without going to the main out. So right now you can hear that it's coming through the main out. So that would be like it's going on stage, going through the house. What I can do is I can turn this down and then I can listen to you through my headphones. And you can hear that, I don't know if you can hear the audio from the headphones in the video, but it's coming through the headphones but not going out the main out. So what that allows me to do is that allows me to uh, play the sound set or any keyboard connected to this mixer without going into the house so I can learn a part or try a sound without the audience hearing that sound. Let's go ahead and power on the sound slate while that's powering on. This controller here I found to be very, very useful, the Core uh, Nano Control, uh, to be very useful with the, with the sound slate because it allows me to have faders that I can use, a physical fader that I can control for the song volume. I can assign these buttons to, uh, you know, change next song, change sounds, do whatever I want to do in riff. So this controller is really handy because it's light, it's small, it's portable. And then here's another thing here. This QWERTY keyboard is a, um, uh, has a trackpad on it. And it's, it's smaller than the half size keyboards that they have out now. So this, is, this came in really, really handy. So what I do usually is I connect it to a USB hub and I can either plug into the front or to the back, but in this case I'll plug into the front so you guys can see it. And then you don't have to have this keyboard, but it's just nice to have if you get stuck and you need to type something on the sound slate, you have a keyboard to do it. So I'm gonna just put this here for now. And then I'll put this on my keyboard. And then wait for the sound slate to finish booting up. Should be in a couple seconds here. Okay, you notice how the sound slate ejected the CD ROM? Um, I created a little script in, uh, on the sound slate to do that. So basically it waits uh, like 20 seconds or so. I forget the, the amount, exact amount of time I gave it. And then it also checks and it tries to ping the router. And upon a successful ping, it ejects the CD uh, ROM. And I did that so I don't, have, I don't have a monitor connected, so I don't know when it's fully up in the windows or not. So this basically tells me I'm ready to use my iPad to connect it to the sound slate. So now, I'm connecting my iPad to this uh, network on this router, going to my remote control app.
And there you have it, it's logging in. I'm now connected on my sound slate from my iPad. And again, this lets me know that it's ready. I'm ready to you know, try to connect it from my iPad. All right, so on channel 10, I have the Airport Express uh, connected to channel 10 on my mixer. There's an audio out coming out of the router. Um, Apple has a feature where you can use what they call AirTunes, so you can set up iTunes to send music to an Airport Express. Um, basically, there's another company, I think they're called uh, Amoeba something or another, but they make a product called Airfoil that allows you to send audio from any application to an Airport Express. So it's really cool because you can use it with Cubase, Ableton Live, Logic, any of those programs, and you could send it to an Airport Express. So here, check it out. So you can see this is on channel 10, I'm turning up and down, and it's on my laptop, and there's nothing connected. There's no wires or anything. No audio cable. It's sending it through the Wi-Fi network, and it's just hardwired from my, uh, from my router uh, to channel 10. Now, uh, with that being said, you only want to use this if you're playing tracks. Uh, most people nowadays aren't using Ableton Live yet, but um, Ableton Live allows you to trigger tracks. But you wouldn't want to use this to do that because there's a latency, like I think like a two second latency. But if you're just playing a track from beginning to end, it's not going to matter because you're not, you're not triggering anything, you're just letting it go. Okay. All right, that wraps it up. Hopefully you guys found something that you guys can use in your own setup. If you'd like to see videos, more videos going forward in the future, please subscribe to my channel, JXS Bebop.